Hello guys and girls, and welcome back to Learning Feed the Beast. Now I've done a little bit of playing around between episodes, quite a lot actually. As you see, there is now a box, and there are some things inside it. So, what do you think of the pattern? I quite like it. It looks a little bit like the Grectek Energy Flow Circuits, and it's using all the XY blocks, or the Zycraft blocks if you want to call it that, like it should be. And all different patterns here, I've got um, platforms, shields, structures, and some different ones in here as well. And they're not that hard to make, I'm sure you can look them up. There's loads of different ones. But I'll do a little bit of looking around what I've done between episodes, because I have done quite a lot, like I said. This thing over here is making scrap, making into scrap boxes, and throwing it through. I've disconnected the matter fabricator at the moment, it's in my inventory. I'm using the power of something else. This is just basically an overflow though, it was sending it into it and when the matter fab was full it would then throw them to here. As you can see it was full for quite a bit. So that was a quick thing there. And now a couple of things to add. In this pack now to make mercury cells you have to use a automatic canning machine, not the normal one, it has to be automatic. Uh, it's quite a lengthy process so I will need to set up something for that and that's quite an annoying feature of the new pack. And what I've done here is set up some machines. I started putting some of these in on the live stream and I thought I'll get back to it when I can do it properly. So this is a very rough thing to speed some of my processing up for the moment. I will do a proper completely automated system soon underneath this whole thing so that my quarries can then just run and be processed straight away. But this is just for me to get some materials for these episodes. So go through this quickly, these are just taking out, you've seen these ones before, just a pulsating gate, putting it through to Tesseract. This is the interesting bit though. This is the industrial grinder. Now the industrial grinder needs water and mercury cells. Mercury cells for some of the recipes to give you increased outputs. So you see here, that gives you that, or without it gives you something else. Um, so it's a bit different. Things like copper are really good to use this for, and especially ferrous, put the ferrous into there, you'll see that the difference is huge of what you get. So this is with mercury cells, and you'll see the output, you get one platinum dust, and then without, and you'll get, i wait for this one to go through actually, you only get a nugget I believe, a, a tiny pile. So you basically got four times the output just because of that, and it's a good time to show you this actually. This set up so that this tesseract here will throw the cells into here. Once I set up an automatic thing from this, that will get sent through. That goes through to there, and oop, they disappear. This tesseract here is giving in water, so some of the recipes need water, and that's good. Power is coming to the side, it's the only available side. Underneath here though, I've got a router. This is extracting the mercury cells from this bar up here. As they're all connected adjacently, you can see all the way through. Then it's ejecting them above, so it's only taking the mercury cells you see there, only taking mercury cells, and it's taken from the barrel. And it's actually visiting all barrels in the system. It may see the barrels over there actually, um, but it doesn't really matter. And then it's then ejecting them to top, so it's throwing them to here which is very very nice. And then I've got another tesseract down here. I love these. Uh, router I mean, sorry. And what this is doing is extracting the stuff from the west side of this and injecting it into here. Very simple thing there. Just to speed some of my stuff up. And then same sort of thing here. Industrial blast furnace. It's a very quick one to move it out and throw it back in. And same thing with electrolyzers, throwing it through. Just being nice and AFK. And same with them. I will make it more pretty sometime and put routers in for them, but for the moment that works. Now what else I've got to cover? I've got to cover the extreme change down here. So I put all these blocks down, these are really nice I think. Now do tell me if they look nice or not. I've put in this thing in the middle. I've decided that I will be making a fusion reactor down here when I have the stuff. It's going to take a long time to gather all the materials, but I do want it down here so that you can see it from above, it will look really nice. And the main difference today is this. I did a little bit of this on the live stream and I finished it off afterwards. And this is using the Zycraft soil. This is relatively cheap. Um, just engineering blocks and you go through. 
and I use quite on top of them. I think it's about 8,000 of them there. And what this does is, I'll show you up here very quickly once I've slept. Okay, so these are craft blocks. If you have stacks of them, first of all, they act as hydrated soil. So you can just put things like wheat on it. If I just grab some seeds from over here, seeds only go onto hydrated soil. So there you are, on it goes. And also, these make things grow faster that they're on them. If you stack more than one, the increased speed effect uh, multiplies so that as you keep mo going more and more and more, they'll grow faster and faster and faster. Don't know what the limit is. Apparently, there is no limit apart from sky limit, I guess. And what I was doing was just putting one layer. Now, some people ask me on the stream why not do multiple layers? And that's because on here, it's designed so that two of these layers of sugarcane get harvested by one harvester. Um, if you did more than one layer of this, then some of them may grow faster, but you lose so many sugarcane worth of space, it's not really worth it. Then on the moment, I've turned them off because they're actually far too productive, and I mean ridiculously productive. Um, absolutely ridiculously. That is what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers, and I've been producing 500 stacks per corner every few hours so that's like 2000 stacks in like four hours ago so you see here these are extremely filled and I keep having to turn the farms off so they don't overflow because you remember each corner of these so each stack in the corner goes to each side so it's 500 stacks in every side <laughs> So turn that off for the moment, and it's just putting the stuff through in its own time. Um, and to add some more engines to this to make it go faster. And then going through to here, I added something else. I added a quantum tank after the little bit of fuel. And that's filling up quite fast. So yeah, there's already 1,400 buckets in there. And that's going to be going for about an hour. And then here, these engines are ridiculously full all the time. So I am ready to upgrade the engines when I feel like it. Um, don't know if I'll do that today, probably not. Um, just a lot of grafting for that. And I've already done a lot of this today already. And below that it looks a bit different as well. I've rearranged the conduits to go around instead of through. But enough of the old stuff, that's boring now for me. We're going to move on to new stuff. So some people may have said in the comments, and I'm going to read them soon, they say, you could use Zycraft box for this. And you can't, they don't actually plant the seeds on top of them. If I put them here, they don't actually replant them. I did test them and it doesn't work, so unfortunately that's not yet in the pack. Hopefully next time they update it, it will go into the pack because it's just a compatibility thing. Um, yep. And that also wouldn't work for the tree farms, I guess. So, new stuff today. We're going to be looking at some more of the Zycraft stuff. We've got the ice to look at and the water. They're quite cool. I've shown you all these Zycraft blocks already. And I've rearranged all my stuff now. I'm starting to organise it. Starting to process stuff, starting to be nice with it. So hopefully it looks a lot better. Really want this place to be nurtured and be proud of it. So, what I want to do today is look at a whole load of I can't say it though. Axes Recruim The thing that this book was in. I've got one in here still. This one. The thing we played with before, I thought it was from Equipment Exchange, but it's not. And it's got a whole load of other stuff, really cool stuff to this mod. So I'm gonna set up some stuff now and I'll get back to you when I'm ready. So I've been very busy and I set up a whole load of things here to show you all the Zycraft stuff that is new and you probably know already that the Zycraft crystals you fall on them they hurt you now but there's a whole load of cool things here I'm going to show you and I'm really enjoying playing with these but as far as I do someone was saying about the power suit thing that I did last time now this isn't a showcase video I'm not doing mod showcases I'm just learning about it and showing you some stuff with it and they didn't like my power suit spray last time and actually I didn't know that these take EU as a power source it doesn't actually say anywhere in anything that they do but they do so my panel helmet and my backpack actually charge them up so they are actually worth using now and you can toggle things on and off my one's actually J at the moment so you can toggle them on and off and here you can select um, which button goes to which mod, or which mod of the armor. And uh, it's going to sleep again, aren't I? Okay, I seem to be forever sleeping in Feed the Beast. Oh, I'll turn those boots back on. 
So first of all, first block, Zykrov water makes things like that disappear. And I don't know if it do. Yep, there we are. So it's basically a cobble generator, and it just acts as normal water, but the block doesn't get used up itself, which is a really nice thing to have. Next one, so that's Zycraft water. Next one is Zycraft fire basin. This works as netherrack, but it, it's just basically netherrack. I don't it doesn't have any other properties. Um, the mod person doesn't say that there is any other properties to it. It's just netherrack without needing to go to the nether. This one here is really cool. This is a craft ice. Same sort of thing as the cobble generator, but this is an ice generator now. And uh, you can really put just to put a normal block breaker next to it and have that powered so that you'll get free ice without needing to use a glacial what's it called it's called a glace glace a glacial precipitator that makes ice uh, with MJ. I don't know if it needs MJ though. Um don't quote me on that. Next thing is these tanks. Now these tanks are quite cool, but the quantum tank I have down there, the couple of them, far outstrip any other sort of tank that you could ever make. And these tanks you can make with any blocks, as long as uh, there is a valve in the innards. So if you put a valve here, it won't work. And I've got some valves on me. That won't work. If I replace that again with a normal block, then it will work. So just any building block doesn't need to be a Zycraft block. You can just use glass, you can use bricks, you can use gravel, anything. So there you are. There's a tank. You just right click on the valve to make the tank complete. And you can put as many valves in as you want. Now these valves work on height. So if you have something going in here, I'll use the very, very convenient thing of the Zycraft water. These, when you put it next to a valve, it will put water in. <laughs> So yeah, it produces 50 millibucket a tick, which is really nice. And so that's going in, that's fine. We'll turn it off now, because we have some water in. Just place that. So now, oh, you remade it, and when you remake it, it keeps the water in it. So I'll just show you that again, actually. That's broken. You can see in there, there's nothing inside. And then when you remake it, it comes back. So you don't actually lose your stuff. Now. Also with this, you can get liquid void, and just put it on there. If you put it onto one of them, then you'll see that the water goes down. So it's a nice thing to have, but if what I had, the liquid void up here, so if you look in here at the moment, it's got 4,100. If I put it onto there, it doesn't go down, because this one is too high. The water level is actually down the bottom one, so only this valve will be active. So you can have it so that and um, you have a valve right near the top for something so that when the water level or the level of liquid gets too high it gets automatically voided it's the same as a void pipe but it's pretty cool as a block so that's about all the XY stuff all the Zycraft stuff that there really is extra um, I'm going to get on now and prep some stuff for the other mod and I'll get back to you in a minute okay I'm just collecting stuff up and I thought this is quite funny if you look at my little mini map it looks like there's a gun on the floor <laughs> How bizarre is that? <laughs> okay, back to work. Okay, before I jump into the whole of this mod, this is not updated yet. There is a use for it which hasn't been implemented yet, says Sir Guy Ryan. And I put in a tank in here for seed oil. Thought it'd be quite cool to have. And I might do more of them for honey and all that as I go round. Most just to look at they're quite cool. That does 2,300 buckets. Okay, so over here I've only got some levels in preparation of this so I'll try and go through it slowly. First thing you can get touchstone of Milidus, Midas and don't quote me on any of these words because I can't say them for life of me. You can make splash serum using Vol's Ordinary Water. These are just made out of glass like this empty vials. You can then make glowing water and these are used in quite a lot of the recipes for this. So let's go along in order. This miller stone actually repairs stuff like this. This is Cross of Mercy and they all pretty much say what they do on them and this one I'm gonna quote the stuff as well. 
It, the cross deals a small consecutive blast every time it hits the undead. Enchantable is a gold sword and is twice as durable, can be repaired with touchstone of Millus. Okay, so instead of repairing on anvil, you have to use that, and we can enchant it. Smite 5. I think that's probably the best you can get on that. Very good. And let me sleep again. Okay, so you've got a really powerful zombie killer there. That's good fun. And you have to repair it with your touchstone Millus. Now the Millus needs glowstone to charge it up with, I think, or it uses it as it repairs it. We won't test that now, though. And the next one... There we are. Next one is the Holy Hand Grenade. It says what it does, basically. Kills mobs, not blocks, or whoever threw it. So we'll go find some mobs very quickly. And in our trusty mob pole, let's have a look. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Very good. Okay, that's the first three out of the way. So we're now on to Magic Bane. And this is a highly enchantable that is I meant to be twice as durable as um, normal gold. Yeah. Every time you hit a creature or player with it, you have a chance of inflicting confusion, blindness, slowness, or weakness. Every blade enchantment adds to its enchantment level total damage. So far, it's a bit too, la la la. So basically, if you have more than one enchant on it, then it gets really, really powerful. Oh, look at that. Vorpal 2, Bane of Ampropos 3, Looting 3, Knockback 2. And let's see if I can combine any of these with it. I had some ready just in case. So Vorpal, we've got a Vorpal, haven't we? Yep, we'll do disjunction. Now every one should make it even better. And the Bane of Anthropos, it's not worked on sharpness wise. Um, that 5 on the Bane of Anthropos is probably better than sharpness 5. Or well, the same as sharpness 5 on effectiveness. So we can add disjunction to this. Nope. Can we re-enchant it? Nope. Okay, I think we'll just live with that. That's got pretty good enchantments on it anyway. So that's nice. And I think I'll just go and find a mob again. Okay, mob time. Let's see. Mm, one hit. Two hit. Well, these are normally two hits anyway. Oh, you can see the po the particle effects on him though. They've got potions on them. I guess that's slowness. Okay, back we go. Okay, let's see if we can recharge this thing now. So let's have a little look at this. Nothing happens here. Let's see if we get some glowstone on us. Oh, there we are. Ah, look at that. Up it goes, up it goes. Very nice. There we are. That works pretty well, actually. Very nice. There we are. Lovely. Now, what have we got next? We've now got the Coin of Fortune. Now, I read up on this bit, actually, as well. This draws things near to you, towards you. Let's put on the mob spawn and have a look at that. But then if you shift and click it, it increases the span by three times. Come on, some mobs. Let's see. Now, some guys should come towards me, maybe. Okay, let's go with these. Oh. I right click that and it jumped into my inventory. Oh, is that active? Oh, okay. There we are, look. I'm over here and you can see it streaming towards me. I just right clicked that and activated it. Doesn't seem to be using any energy though. Of anything. That's working very, very well. No, my experience isn't getting clumped up in there. That could be a very, very useful thing to use over here, look. And I'm meant to shift and right click. Then it goes even more. And you can see it, look, the items are coming all the way from over there towards me. I really like that. That's awesome. With no cost at all. Lovely. Okay, back we go. And our next one, let me have a look. Yep, our next one is the Salamander's Eye. Now this is basically a nether protector. So in here, it has even an animation on it. Not very common for items. There we go again. It does what it says again. Dispels blaze fireballs and reflects glass fireballs when held and puts out fires around you. Now this has actually a little bit cool bit on the wiki for it. It or for the fire bit. Um it puts out fires around you with magic, so I go have a look at that very quickly. Now I have drained some of this nether with lava, um with some pumps to get the lava out. To get some you know, quicker U matter, but uh, have a little look at this. <laughs> 
Very nice. Very nice. No cost again. I might actually take this with me. I don't know if it'll do it if it's not in my event. Oh, nope, you have to be holding it. Well, that could be a good thing to use. I like this mod. It's got a lot of cool little things in it just to make things a little bit more fun. Okay, back we go. Okay, so the next thing, as <laughs> there's a lot of things today, is the Empress Chalice. Now, this is an infinite water bucket, and if you drink it, it will trade, I think, one half a heart for half bar of hunger. So if you drink it, oh, we can't drink it because we're full life, I guess. Or do we have to fill it up? Let's have a little look. Okay, it's got water in it. If I drink it, hurts me for half heart, but gives me half heart of hunger. That's if you drink it. If not, it works as an infinite source, it says. So does that mean I can use it on something? Nope. Can I put it down somewhere? Let's have a look at this. Yep, infinite water bucket. That's really cool, actually. Really cool. I'm so using that, actually. That's really nice. Very good. Okay. Next thing is the altar of light. Now this is a cool little thing. Not very useful for us, but if you put it down, every four to five Minecraft days it will give you a glowstone. Let's have a look at the wiki. When placed in direct sunlight and fed two glowstone redstone dust, it produces a glowstone block every three to five days. So you have to feed redstone. Do I have some redstone around? I should have some. Let me find some of that. Should just be over here. Hopefully, I'm not cramming in too many things at once. I've got a little experience from that. I don't know if that was the. Oh, the. Oh, okay. The coin's still active. Oh, does that mean if I punch things out, it'll come towards me so I won't lose it? That can be quite cool, actually. We'll turn it off for now. Okay, so if you feed glowstone. Okay, I fed it for glowstone. I guess it will just put out as a block. I don't know if... Oh, it's making sounds. I don't know if that would be fast enough for today, but we'll just have a little wait for that and see if it does produce anything. Okay, there are some things here that I'm not going to be making on camera. These are the cloak of distortion. Here's distortion, yep. And a lot of these ones use ender pearls for them, and there are other things with them that I'd rather use instead. So this one is an invisibility thing, but it works same as normal visibility potion, but use ender pearls for it, and you can still be seen with your armor on. We have the wither rose, and uh, witherless rose, um, costs a lot of stuff actually, and protects you from withering. I don't need that because destruction catalyst, and um, this thing if you, um, yeah, it doesn't normal within the blocks, so it should just blow out a three by three by three hole using that. Again, I don't really need that. Um, sword Jonah's staff consumes torches and you can place them long distance. Again, not really useful for me. Lily pad of fertility, this makes crops grow faster. Again, I don't really think I need that. This is quite a cool one. That is quite interesting actually. Glowing bread. It's, ra it's quite cheap because the glowing water isn't too expensive, especially as we have free glowstone and you just use these up. I don't know if you'll get the vials back because a lot of them it was actually giving you them back from the recipes. I've got some in here where it's emptied them out. So it could be a really easy, cheap way of doing stuff. But this, if you eat it, it's meant to be no matter what hunger you're at, it will fill it up to full. Which is pretty epic actually. Um but yeah I just have free steak so I'm not really that concerned. And the number of things here, the void tear, the void satchel and the Wraith's eye. And the Wraith's Eye lets you teleport to places using Ender Pearls, like a waypoint kind of thing that you can teleport back to. Could be cool, but then, then again, I haven't set up a proper Enderman farm yet. I've only got that thing in the sky, so I haven't got an abundance of Ender Pearls around. And I've got the portal guns, so I quite like using them. So yeah, and these ones hold stuff. I um, don't think there's too much more to that. And uh, that's the proper name, if you want to know. <laughs> um, awful language on this. I'm going to wait around for a couple of bits to see if this produces a glowstone though and I'll be back in a bit. And there we go, it's made a glowstone. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I can add some more wrestling I guess. I think it takes four. 
Well, it took two that time, it took four the first time, I think. And I've got Silk Touch on me, so I can grab that one. That's really cool. <laughs> I like that. It's cute little things that make this really fun, and that eye is really disconcerting. But yes, I think I've managed to cover a lot of stuff today. I'm going to get working on my engine upgrades, I think, um, because those farms are ridiculously big for the engines I have. And then I need to start looking towards collecting lots of materials. So, as always, if you have any suggestions or comments or anything you want to share with me, or suggestions for more things, I'd love to hear them, so comment below, please. And uh, if you have enjoyed this, no, please do give it a like. It really does help. And my likes has been really good recently. Now we're almost getting 200 on these, so it's really fantastic for me. So, guys, thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you next time.